type game that will make a game without any communication. In this pass the game challenge, each dev will take turns working on the project, making progress and passing it along to the next developer to continue. The result ended up in the most unexpected way, so make sure to stay until the end. So let's begin with the creation of a new game with the first developer, which is me. Alright, so my plan was to make a prison escape game combining some platformer mechanics. So I created a new Unreal project and began setting up the basic movement and animations. Once that was done, it was time to start with the map and obstacle course. I added this moving platforms where you will need to time your jumps perfectly. And on top of that, there are these insane spinning blades just waiting to slice you up into pieces. For the last part of the obstacle course, I implemented these threatening pillars that will slam you to the floor if you're not fast enough. With that done, and a fun set of dangers, I added a prison cell to spice things up and elevated the level into the sky so it looks more intimidating and immersive. After a few more improvements at sounds and UI, I modeled this insane looking monster in Blender. <laughs> yeah, of course I did not model this, I simply used an AI that would auto-generate it for me with a simple text bar. And without a place, it was ready to be passed to the next developer. By the way, click the link in the description to grab my new free ebook on developing and releasing your first game in Unreal. With that said, let's continue with the video. So let's get this out of the way, I'm not a game dev, like at all, zero experience, if we're being honest I'm barely an asset flipper, I'm fully aware I'm the weakest link here and have no idea how I even got here in the first place, but I'm gonna give it the best I got, how hard can it really be, right? When Gorka sent me the project I had no idea what to expect. No, it's a platformer. Oh. No! The first thing I wanted to do was change the player character, sorry Gorka. I've downloaded this project by Dev Enabled a while back and never got to use it but I thought it would be perfect for this challenge. I love this little skull face character, his movements are really smooth and he even has a double jump. Unfortunately there's a small issue, if we want to retarget animations it won't work for this character. So the other devs will either have to make new animations in Blender or decide to keep him or not. Naturally no platformer is complete without collectible coins so I found a 3D mesh on Sketchfab, turned it into a pickup item and Yes, it spins. I don't care if it spins, man! For fun, I also added a jump pad and some basic spikes that will kill you if you touch them. I then added a little secret area just under the moving platforms. It's super basic, but I'm doing my best here. I updated the death widget too. Instead of pressing the space bar to retry it, the screen now fades to black and restarts the level. I think this is much smoother. Oh yeah, and I added some blood effects for when the player dies. But restarting from the beginning every time you die, yeah, that got annoying real quick. So I added a checkpoint system where it if you walk through a checkpoint and die, you respawn at the last checkpoint you reached. I got a bit inspired by the game only up and created a terribly designed climbing section. I wanted to make it easy enough to complete but made the last jump a bit tricky. You need to sprint, hit the jump pad and then jump one more time to reach the final platform. I added some sound effects by Ovani for collecting coins, the jump pad, the double jump and I thought about adding footsteps, sounds and particles but I'll leave that for the other devs. I also changed the music that Gorka added to the project. The new music I added isn't great either, but I think it's an improvement. And I also added a sound effect for when you complete the level. One feature I'm proud of, even though it's super simple, is a coin magnet. But when you get close to a coin, it pulls towards you, just like you would see in any other platformer. It looks and feels pretty good in my opinion. Some other minor things that I added was a dash ability. I've left the blueprint code in the project, but I've disconnected the input node. I personally didn't find a use for it, but if the other does find the code and want to use it, they can. I also added a clamp for the player's camera pivot. I did this so the camera doesn't clip through the player when you look up. Lastly, I grabbed an asset pack from Meshing Gun Studios to give the environment some color. I added grass, flowers, trees and a windmill at the end of the level like a destination point. I also swapped out the default lights and sky, added stylized lighting, clouds and particles like falling leaves and wind. I did have bigger plans, I wanted to decorate the whole level, add a health system with three lives like any classic platformer, a score system and give the player an extra life after collecting 100 coins. I also felt the background was a bit boring so I wanted to add mountains, birds and other elements. Lastly, I was really hoping to add a dialogue system so the player can interact with NPCs, but I ran out of time. Hopefully the next devs can pick up where I left off. Before I end my turn, wanted to mention I'm currently working on a Deadpool vs Wolverine game. If you're interested, you can check that out on my channel, as well as other videos on game animation sample. I had a great time working on this, let me know if you like what I've added to the project, and I can't wait to see what the rest of the devs do. 
What's up? My name's Ethan, otherwise known as SPRWTV on platforms, that is Sparrow, no vowels. I'm a visual effects artist. In the game or cinematic production pipeline, it is my job to add the spice, the razzle-dazzle, the pizzazz, if you will, to the final product and make it look just that much more polished and professional and easy on the eyes. Most of the time, if the effect is there, but you don't necessarily notice consciously that it is there, it means I have done my job correctly. All right, let's see what we have to work with. Interesting. Okay, basically what I'm seeing here, a bunch of coins, long hallway. Is this a running game? Let's give it a, let's give this a run and see what we have been given. I think the first thing I'm going to do is go down here and add a sort of decoration for the death volume, because currently there isn't one. I, uh, create a folder, VFX, Niagara system. And for this, we're going to make it sort of a lava-ish, fire, cool stuff. Let's start with a spawn rate. Now we have effectively what we need already to start blocking this in. What we're doing here is we're adding a linear force on spawn to make these particles bounce up and back down, almost as if they are bursts of lava being shot forth from a volcano. We've now successfully set up the system to handle location events of the initial particles, which we are then tracking in the air using these trail particles. And here all we have done is distort a whole bunch of noise textures to create a magma material which we can then apply to our cube in the real world. Because this shape right here is effectively just a cube that has been scaled into the world, one thing we can do to make sure the texture is always at the correct size is that we create a float 2 from the X and Y scale of the object and multiply the texture coordinates by that number. This way, no matter how big or small this gets in the world, the UVs will scale to compensate. All we're going to do for the flare behind the coin is just to add an infinitely looping particle system. And this is about as advanced as we need this to be since it will always be camera facing and the only interaction it will have in the world is that without the depth fade, it will clip through the coins. So with the depth fade, we avoid that entirely. And now with just two systems, we have this. So let's jump in game and see how this works. Okay. I see he's got a projectile, this is good. Let's spawn 50 of these per second, and then let's also scale the beam width, or the ribbon width, rather. And now all of these little balls that he throws out have trails. Overall, I'm fairly happy with this one, I cannot lie. However, I do think it's a little bit too not emissive enough, so what I'm going to do is increase this to about 5. And then what we're going to do is drop this to about 3 seconds. We have now added just the slightest bit of visual polish to this project, and um, well, let's see where it goes from here. And guys, if you are enjoying the video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel for more content and tutorials like this. With that said, let's continue with the video. Hi, I am Fetis. I have a channel with Unreal Engine procedural generation tutorials, but currently I am focused on providing video editing and content creation services. The first thing I noticed is that the game doesn't teach the player which buttons to press to perform different actions. So I fixed that by adding simple text prompts to the level. Then I realized that there was no real motivation for players to collect coins, so I added score. Also, I noticed that players can do this and I had no idea what to do with that. So I just implemented main menu and pause menu. After that, I realized the level was pretty boring and uh, came up with the idea to make the game infinite. I turned the original level into a tutorial and added a new infinite mode. Then I implemented system to spawn blade chunks. In my opinion, it worked perfectly. I wanted to expand the system to spawn other obstacles and even create an auto turret obstacle. But unfortunately, I had uh, a few hours in total to work on the project. So in the end, I just created an empty class for the turret, hoping the next dev would understand my idea. And then I passed the project. Hey people, I'm Pobato Games and do some spicy game development videos over on my channel. My first step for this project was to play a little bit because I needed to get an overview of the current state. And oh boy, I failed over and over again. 
but the tutorial itself already seemed pretty solid. Therefore, I decided to focus on the endless mode. Because the setup was already there, but it needed a bit more love. So my goal was to set up different chunks that can be spawned and a progression system that makes the game harder as the player progresses. First, I worked on a system that spawns basic block shapes that vary in their size. Through that, I hope that the beginning of the mode isn't instantly overwhelming the player. Further, I also implemented that new chunks will be placed further away through the progression system, which technically should make the mode a little bit harder later on. Next, I focused on introducing different hazard chunks. For that, I used the existing concepts of the blades and spikes. Those chunks are introduced after the normal blocks to further amp up the challenge. And as you might already have seen, I added the coins to each of the chunks, which can be collected to increase the score. I also decided to slightly adjust the power of the dash, because otherwise it felt a little bit overkill to me. With that, I think we got a decent first version for an endless mode. And honestly, it is pretty challenging for a noob like me. This was my best high score for this version of the mode, and with that, I'm out. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like it and subscribe to my channel. I have many tutorials on how to learn Unreal Engine 5. With that said, bye bye.